All right. Hello, traders. It is Tuesday, September 17th, 2024. Let's get into our market wrap up and we'll talk today about a few different things. I want to spend a little time on poor man's covered calls. So I'm going to give you some of the trades that we're looking at today. We had a great, uh, great meeting with many of the members in the discord and covered poor man's covered calls or the PNCC trades on both the PM accounts and in the small account or the IRA accounts as well. So which trades will work well and where? Uh, giving yourself a little bit of different types of strategies to get to get along with. Still a premium trader. I'm focused main in my main account. We are focused solely on, for the most part, futures and a few other ETS stocks, things like that. But for the most part, we're futures traders in the main account and we're using premium selling strategies. I'm gonna be selling naked puts. I'm gonna be trading 112 trades or 111 trades. I'm also going to be doing put credit spreads. So any of those trades we're going to be using, we're gonna be hedging ourselves a bit as well because we're trading futures. Uh, but really the need for hedging comes in, especially when we're campaign trading. And we've added a lot more discretionary trades doesn't mean you shouldn't hedge, okay? but those trades don't stack up as many uh, in the different underlyings. And they're also using a lot less buying power. So that gives us a lot more cushion to trade. So we've added more credit spreads, but we're still trading the 11X bear trap trades. Uh, we're still trading naked puts, uh, but uh, those put credit spreads have certainly helped. And in the lazy trader account, we're gonna focus on that today. We're gonna cover a little bit more of the poor man's covered calls, leaps uh, that we're doing some naked puts uh, and uh, credit spreads as well there so again prom mostly premium selling uh, in those in that account and then we'll cover the small account and what we're doing in there and how we've managed to navigate that trade and i'm going to update those portfolios live for you because i haven't updated the number so we're going to cover the trades we're doing today and we put on a bunch of trades even though the fed meeting is tomorrow and that's where our focus will be tomorrow. We're just going to kind of lay low, although I say that, and then I'll add some trades. But we're really going to lay low tomorrow. We'll wait till that Fed announcement. We'll see what happens. Are we going to get the 50 basis point move from the Fed, or are we going to get uh, that 25 basis point move? What does the Fed watch tool say uh, today? Well, right now, today, we have a 63% chance. Okay of a 50 basis point cut and a 37% chance that it's gonna be 25. We'll see. I'm still leaning towards the 25. I know everybody and their brother thinks it could be 50. There's a couple Fed uh, governors that really are leaning towards the 50. So I know there's already people in the 50 camp and we'll see what happens. And maybe, uh, you know, maybe it will be surprised. We'll see what happens uh, when the Fed comes out tomorrow. Either way, I think we're set up pretty well. Uh, we're hedged. We've got trades to take on. If the uh, if the markets climb, we're going to be in fantastic shape. If the markets dump a bit, we're going to be in good shape. So I think either way, I think we got this thing surrounded a bit unless we get a strong outlier crazy move because not only do they cut 50, but they say something horrendous uh, that really tanks the markets. That would be the only area... Uh, that we'll be watching, but we do have things in play uh, for that as well. So we'll see what happens. Our buying power is in great shape. We took off some risk today ahead of that, but we did add some new trades and I'm going to cover the new trades with you. So lots of things to unpack in the next few minutes uh, with you. So we'll keep it really brief. I'm not really going to get into the markets. I will share a couple of, uh, yeah, let's not even share a couple of charts. Let's wait and do uh, some PMCC stuff. Let's get through the different accounts first. Uh, and again, Fed probabilities, 63% uh, right now of this 50 basis point move for the September meeting date. So that's what we're looking at. We'll see what happens in September. Did, what, does the Fed cut, uh, Fed cut in, uh, in September a little bit more? In November, okay, we're still expecting to be even further down, about 450. So if we look at September, I hate the fact that they had this dropping piece. It's a pain in the neck. Okay, so we're sitting right now, okay, at 525, 550. 
Okay, so we're looking at, again, 475, 500 in September tomorrow. But if we take a look at November, okay, where are we? Well, now there's a 51% chance that we're down 75 basis points in November. Now, is that going to be 50 now and 25 later, 25 now, maybe 50 later? Who knows? Uh, but we'll we'll see we'll see how this uh, shapes up, and then in December uh, as well. Uh, right now it's a little bit mixed uh, in in December that we could be down, you know, maybe as much as you know a dollar or more on this uh, more than a hundred basis point move. Well, we'll see what happens. Let's get off of that. Let's get into the trade trackers and let's take a look. Let's and uh, I have not had a chance to update my numbers so. Let's get into that. For the day, we finished with a delta of 299.08. So we're pretty delta neutral heading into the FOMC tomorrow, 848. So a little bit lighter on our theta. Why is our theta getting lighter? Well, VIX is just not doing much of anything. VIX is sitting at 1761. Even the VVIX is still mildly elevated uh, at 52. Uh, or I'm sorry, at 0.52 up today, half a percent up. It's still mildly elevated. It's still you know in that uh, that 107 range. So it's plus 100 or over 100, which is something I think we got to just keep an eye on. So what did we do today? Up or down? Let's see. Oh, three, five, six, two, four, seven. Netlick dropped a little bit today, even though we had a large realized gain uh, that was closed on the session. And then if we look at our BP usage, 180, 895, and that would make sense since we did close some trades today. And then we'll look at our Vega, which is 5346. So um, Vega's down as well. So good shape. We're not, you know, we don't have a ton of volatility uh, in there. It's still planning. We have some trades on, some hedges on. Okay, we also lightened up a bit today, but we did book another $3,500. So we've now booked in two days, 46.48, and we were up 46.99 last week. So booking some winners uh, today. What did we What did we get out today? So number one, we closed some naked puts of a long-term 112. Again, this is one of the long-term 112s that uh, we never closed back in August on uh, Valmageddon Day. We left this thing on. I took it off today at about 87% as opposed to 90 or 95%. Uh, still a $5,400 winner. So we'll take that and run with it. So a nice trade there. And then we had a hedge that expired today. So as usual, hedges expire worthless. Uh, most of the time, 95% of the time, your hedges are just a drag on your portfolio, but they are a necessary evil and a cost of doing business. So we did have a 14 DTE hedge that expired. We added a new one today as well. So we're still back up uh, on that. So overall, not too shabby. We're still up nicely over the last month uh, in, in our trading. We've been doing well and we're watching uh, a lot of trades now starting to come to fruition uh, that we've been just kind of sitting on for a bit. Uh, and it was nice to take off another 112 trade winning today in the main trade account. All right, let's take a look at the lazy trading account. And this account, which is primarily four man's covered calls, leaps, uh, and a few little credit spread, other types of trades. But for the most part, it's... Uh, Oh, the spy leap put strategy. So spy leap put strategy is the campaign trade that's driving this account. It's the majority of the buying power that we have, which is 30% of the entire account is allocated to be used for the spy leaps strategy that we run. And then we have about 10% of the account in poor man's covered calls, 10% in leaps, and we allocate about 10% in spec trades, which is about 60% of a portfolio margin account. Uh, so this account. What are we doing today? Let's see. We're at, I don't really track these metrics too closely in this account. We're going to be positive Delta uh, because we're mainly all leaps and we're all selling uh, and we're not really hedging this account. 
uh, at all. We're, we're selling naked puts, we're selling credit spreads. So we're gonna be very positive delta in this account. Well, 0.36, not terrible. Um, so we're, that's all good. 271 is still the theta. Uh, so we're generating you know, a decent amount of daily theta in this account. Would like to have some more, uh, but there's some other trades in this account. It's not the same as futures uh, in there. So let's take a look at the net leg today, 207,309. So just down a couple uh, bucks, 600 bucks or so. So it dropped about 600 bucks in the net lick today. It's all good. And then BP in this account is up 130.070. So we're sitting at about 56% uh, at buying on a buying power standpoint, uh, which is fine. And some of that is in not only Bill, but in SVOL as well. So both of those are adding uh, buying power into the account that we aren't really utilizing uh, for for trading. So 56%, not too shabby. Um, I'll take that uh, in this particular account. And then if we look at the small account here, this thing's just kind of been bouncing up and down. But really over the last month now, uh, we haven't done a lot of trading because there's a lot of things just sitting there waiting to be done. Plus, we had stopped out of a few trades uh, in early August. So we're just trades just really on a rebuilding mode. But and we've been closing some trades here and there. On its small account today at 15, so Delta's up at 15. I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, 29 on the theta, 0.3%. We ended the day at 97.90. Okay, so down just a fraction on that lick. And our buying power, which should have gone up 47.70. Uh, so we're up to about 48% buying power. Now, what did we add that changed the complexion of this account? Uh, today, we did add a new copper credit spread and copper futures, and we added a poor man's covered call trade in this account. So what did we add from a poor man's covered call standpoint uh, in this account? Uh, we'll briefly take a look here uh, on it, but uh, in this small account, we added Chipotle as a covered call trade, and then we added... Uh, CMG. So really good stuff. Uh, and I'm sorry, Chipotle and Copper were the two trades that we added in the small account. So overall, not too shabby, like where we are in that small account. In the Lazy Trader account, okay, what did we do today? Uh, we added a trade in Oxy. All right, so we added actually a Jade Lizard in Oxy. Why did I go with a Jade Lizard trade as opposed to just a credit spread or something like that? Well, I did. I, you know, looking at the chart on Oxy, this is one of those underlines that I really like. It doesn't fit my typical mold, but I felt Oxy has been oversold to a great degree. It's down past its Bollinger Band at the three ATR. The RSI is oversold and starting to rebound on the on the daily. So I feel Oxy has taken a pretty good hit, and it is a really good company. And oil, of course, has been taking a pretty decent hit. So I like Oxy here. I think it gives us a chance to get in lower. So what what did we do in this trade? We we went with a credit spread, and we only wanted to go out about sixty days. Okay, so I only wanted to go about fifty nine DTE on this particular trade, and I was going to put a credit spread on. But when I, once I put the credit spread that I wanted on, I took a look at the call side and felt you know what calls are priced decently on Oxy. And I don't think we're going to get all the way up to the 62 and a half, at least not before this trade closes. So it gives me a little bit of a strangle type of opportunity here. Uh, so I used the Jade Lizard here. We took in really, really good credit and we'll manage that trade separately between the calls and the put spread part of the Jade Lizard. And then we also jumped into a naked put on Google. So in the Lazy Trader account, we added NVIDIA the other day, and I added Google today. Was it the right timing, the day before the Fed? We'll see. But really, I sold the 125 put for pretty good credit. I, I'm more than happy to take assignment at $125 a share, considering that Google right now is sitting, what, at $159. So we would have to drop 35, 35 bucks. Uh, to get there. So almost 20%, what is 35 divided by 159? 
it had to drop 22% to get to our naked put. Okay. If at that point that happens, I am more than willing to take assignment on this thing or roll it out. Uh, so I'm all good uh, with Google. It's just part of the part of trading, part of the like naked trader uh, plan. And then in the main account, in the trade tracker account, uh, we were busy, but we added a new hedge, uh, which is, again, preparing for tomorrow, but just replacing the current hedge that we have. And then on RTY, we added a credit spread. Our RTY had a good day today. We're expecting rates to drop tomorrow. The more rates start to drop, the better that should be for RTY. Now, we had this exact same thought process a couple of weeks ago, RTY sold off. We ended up closing those trades out. We're going to go back in the well again with a credit spread on RTY and see how that shapes up. So those are the trades that we uh, put on today in the account, all three accounts, the, the main trading account, the small account, and the lazy trader account. We also focused on put credit spreads and the put credit spread trade. We're looking at those the credit spread, the poor man's covered call trade. Uh, we're looking at putting those on. We looked at a handful of underlyings. I'm going to share with you some of the underlyings we looked at that I really like, but let's get into the charting platform. And you can see some of these are labeled out here. So we looked at uh, AMD uh, meets my criteria as well, especially on the weekly. And I'm looking at the weeklies here for these poor man covered calls. Uh, it meets the criteria. It's above the 50 moving average. The 21 is still above the 50. MACD, RSI are rising. And RSI is below 55. It's even below 50. So I think it's a good value here on AMD. We haven't pulled a trigger on it. That's one we're looking at. Uh, I'm also looking at ARM. Now, I already have a trade on in ARM. So in ARM, we have a trade on. That trade's doing just fine. That's actually in the lazy trader account right now. If I look at that trade, that arm trades up 25% in six days. Okay. Um, CRM. Now CRM is one we took a look at today as well as a potential uh, potential trade. It fits my criteria. It's above the 50 day moving average on the weekly. The 21 is still above the 50, which is above the 200. They're stacked. They're moving higher. It's a bullish PSR. MACD is rising, RSI is rising, squeeze is rising. It's in a squeeze. It's in a symmetrical triangle. I really like where CRM is positioned. I think it's coiled, uh, potentially ready to go. I think that's an interesting uh, trade to put on. Google, we pulled the trigger on today. So in Google here, uh, you can see, I don't know if this is, well, let's move that. Okay, I think this doesn't really touch down here as well. It's close here. Probably needs to be up a little higher um, in this to make sure we're hitting at least three three points on this line. All right, so Google, uptrend above the 50, 21's above the 50, all of them are above the 200. MACD's reversing, RSI is moving higher. All on the weekly, the daily looks pretty good. So I like where we are on Google. I think this sets up well for a poor man's covered call uh, type of trade. Uh, HIMS, HIMS, uh, we're looking at that as well here. I think that's also setting itself up for potential trade. So we'll see we'll see if that materializes here. Um, but overall, still in a decent longer term uptrend uh, on it here, but definitely a big sell off recently. Decent company. We'll see what happens. But if you liked it back in the mid 20s, you should love it here in the mid teens. I still think it's a viable company. Uh, JPM was a uh, a trade we looked at today on the member call. Uh, this was actually a trade from one of our members wanted to do a poor man's covered call on this. And I don't disagree. I think this is an, a great opportunity. I mean, this thing just moves up, down to the 21, moves up, down to the 21, moves higher, down to the 21, moves even higher, down to the 21, and now bouncing again. Now, momentum seems to be a little bit more negative now than it was. But overall, you're holding the 21. You're not even close to the 50. RSI you know, is still below 55, which is where kind of my parameters here. The daily looks decent. I think JPM is another opportunity. MicroStrategy is another one. 
here, potentially breaking out of this symmetrical triangle. It's just kind of stuck um, sideways. So let's see what happens if it can get out of its own way. Uh, it's in this really symmetrical uh, triangle, but it's also in this volatility box uh, that we put it in. So it's in balance here, sitting right in this spot. I think it also sets up well for strangle opportunities. It's just a little more volatile. So I'm going to stick away from that. But it's not a bad strangle opportunity. This thing's really been struggling. Uh, is Bitcoin going to move its way higher or not? We have Palo Alto Networks. I think this looks decent to get into here. Let's just wait and see what the Fed does. Uh, Qualcomm, I think this looks good to get into here. I think the semiconductors look decent to get into here after being beaten up pretty decently. I think we need to fix this trend line a bit more now. And that's what we're looking at. If we can break that, I'm gonna make this a little smaller, less crazy. So I think that sets up well. So I think there's a lot of really good uh, opportunities. We are already in SoundHound with a poor man's covered call. This thing has been great, just traveling sideways here in a bit of a symmetrical triangle. We'll see if it um, is able to break out to the upside or not. NVIDIA holds a lot of shares uh, of this. So NVIDIA is heavily invested in this company. That's good for me. Okay, if NVIDIA is willing to put a lot of money into it, I like that opportunity. Square is another opportunity here to take a look at. And then ExxonMobil. So we have some decent trade setups coming our way. Let's get through the Fed announcement tomorrow. Let's see what happens. If we get any more selling, we'll check some of these names uh, this week. What I did not cover in this list for you was, I think, Apple. Is certainly a decent setup in here. Okay, I love the fact that it's sold off the last couple of days. Okay? I think Apple's trying to give you a better entry point. Let's see if Apple uh, can move down a little bit more. I think Bank of America. Okay, Buffett has sold a bunch. It's pulled down. Okay, now it's stabilizing. It's looking pretty good on the weekly. So it really, really fits our criteria here on the weekly. Not sure why. It's not actually falling into, you know, I know exactly why is because Bank of America is not in my watch list. Okay, so that's why it didn't show up uh, in my scan. And it is one that I was actually looking at um, in here. And I want to move Bank of America up here with some of the other. financials up in here. So PayPal also, I think this thing is looking pretty interesting as well. The only thing with PayPal is the RSI is getting a little out of control on the weekly. It's already made a really good move. I'd like to see this thing settle down a bit, maybe give us a pullback. Uh, but I do like PayPal and I like what we're seeing on PayPal here as we're moving higher. Nice bounce here. Daily chart looks fantastic. I think there's a good a good opportunity here. So I think PayPal is is another one. CMG, which is Chipotle. I don't think that's on my watch list either. Uh, it's not. So that's why I did not get uh, any of these uh, showing up on here. But I think uh, I think this is certainly another one uh, to take a look at in this. And then NVIDIA, last one I promised, and then we're going to let you guys go. Uh, so NVIDIA, why is this thing not set up well? Uh, for me, it should also be showing up. It is above its 50. Okay. It's above its 21. It's pulling back nicely. RSI is down to 53. I think this thing sets up pretty well. So not sure why NVIDIA not showing up in my scan for some reason. But overall, I really like where NVIDIA is. We actually have long puts uh, on this. So in the Lazy Trader account, that one's working. And again, the Lazy Trader account, don't get all excited the fact that I use the word lazy and that you don't have to do any work uh, in there. It is just not an active trading account. So we are trading more stocks. It is a portfolio margin account. I'm not a gigantic stock fan, so I don't like to get into a ton of different names. We're going to keep this under you know, 10, particularly 10, maybe 15 names maximum. We're not going to go crazy. Uh, we're going to be playing higher quality 
for the most part, stocks in there. We've got stuff like Google and Constellation Energy and uh, NVIDIA and Oxy are in there, as well as SPY and TLT, TMF. We've got Tesla in there as well uh, with the uh, trade. And we've got uh, ETFs like XLE in there as well. So ETFs, totally fine. Stocks, eh, but we're going to keep playing them. But that account as a portfolio margin account doing fantastic, held up really well in August, doing pretty well now, near its all-time high. Let's see what the Fed does tomorrow. I hope you got your trades planned. Tomorrow's going to be an exciting day. We're going to see some volatility. We sold off towards the end of the day a little bit today, but really the market held in there you know, pretty, pretty well. Okay, SPY held in there pretty decently for us uh, today. Um Actually, up just a fraction. SPS, XPX, up a fraction. IWM, up you know, 0.8 of a percent. And the Q's up basically uh, a small fraction. So heading into tomorrow, doesn't seem like the market's feeling super skittish or bullish. If we're taking a look at the VIX as well, like I said, VVIX still elevated over 100. I'd like to see it get back down into that under, you know, break down under a hundred. That would be for me the best place uh, for it to, to hang out, but we'll see. Uh, and then VIX dropping uh, or raised a little bit today ahead of tomorrow, but really it's down to 1761. So VIX kind of relaxed uh, a bit, definitely under 20. We'll see what happens tomorrow. If you found a ton of trade ideas in here helpful for you, okay, click the like button down below. We appreciate that. Uh, if you are not a member, share it. Let us know uh, if we can help uh, the others on here. So become a member. Let us know what we're doing. And if you want to follow along the trades that we're doing live, uh, we are really putting things together here. Have some great trades ahead for you uh, and really giving you a ton of trade ideas. And that's what we're doing. Have a great rest of your evening. Stay tuned, everybody. We'll see what the Fed does tomorrow. Bye-bye.